Finally, all right, okay, I can stop with this one. Hi, gang, how are you? I hope all is well. You are listening to MKJ TV at this moment. Yes, it's a little bit of my bra. Don't box me about it. Oh, my God, I saw your bra. It's okay. You will not go to hell for seeing my bra. So, uh, this is a really short, um, going to be a really short clip today um and i'm doing something funky with my hair i got it wrapped and then tucked on the side so it's kind of this funky thing in the back this looks a little weird i might tuck that later but anyway um so as i've shared with you guys i've been getting um treatment in my mouth at the dentist and i've gone maybe four times four times now and they tell me that i had to go a total of eight times possibly eight times um to fully get the mouth repaired and working properly so that it won't injure me later or have any repercussions or blah 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 blah. now initially when they told me i was like oh okay you know i was preparing for the worst i always prepare for the worst so that when the worst happens it doesn't knock me over and if it's not the worst then it's cool and i'm genuinely excited well i tried to apply that theory this time um, the first time was definitely painful, and I was like, uh, wait. It wasn't too, too painful. It was the needles to, like, numb the mouth was, like, extra. But then, um, after that, it began to be easier to go because I knew what to expect each time. And now it's just like, uh, okay, I'll be there, you know? And it's funny because the place is, um, it's with Yonsei University, and so these are like dental students in training and so the, of course they have regular dentists do the major stuff but the cleaning and the whatever is students so each time it's somebody different in my mouth and i know they love to see me coming because they're like oh hey the foreigners here we get to work on our mouth so every time it's someone different and this past time it like she was, was not good like she wasn't it was just like all over the place it wasn't smooth it wasn't there was nothing. I was just like, can you hurry up and get out of my mouth, please? That's how I felt um, when I was leaning backwards in the dentist chair. <laughs> and, okay, so how does this become a spiritual chat? Hello, cacao. I'm going to silence this because otherwise it's for sure going to go off like it always does a million times a day. So, um, oh, I like this song. Can you hear it? Oh, what? Okay, which, this song's a perfect fit. Moving forward. Okay, so today's spiritual chat, I'm sorry, I know it's taking me a while to get into it. Okay, so the, um, the process. So you go in, and the first time, like I said, it's painful. Each time it gets easier, but each time they're repeating the same process with a different method. So they uncap the tooth take out the stuff that they killed from the last time and then put in the new stuff to kill in the new part so they can take it out the next time, right? So essentially, it's just killing off more and more and more of, sorry that I just did that, um, it was a gnat. Um, they kill off more and more of the tooth. And it's crazy because I was thinking like, man, I don't wanna go to the dentist anymore. And, and it was like, think spiritual revelation. So that's what happens in God. Like from situation to situation, faith to faith, glory to glory, God kills off a part of our heart that's not like him. He kills off a part of us that's making us unbeautiful. He kills off a part of us that's hindering us from loving each other the way that we should love each other. He kills off a part of us that's hindering us from really living to our total potential. He kills that off through situations, sometimes through people, sometimes through disappointments, and sometimes even through heartache. 
But in retrospect, the next time we go to the dentist, God will be the dentist in this scenario. The next time we go to the dentist, it gets easier. Not only does it get easier, but our mouth gets better. So, for example, the first time it was extremely painful, and he was like, okay, I'm going to tap your tooth to find out if, you know, there's been any, to find out how severe it is. So he tapped, and I was like, ah, like I was so much in pain. But today, when he tapped, it was just discomfort. It wasn't painful. I was just like, eh, that's not, I didn't feel great. I wouldn't want you to do that all day. But it didn't kill me. And he said, okay, so you're much better than the last time. We're going to keep doing the same thing. We're going to keep rotating methods until when I tap, you don't feel anything. And I was like, dude, you better talk to my soul. Because I feel like that's been my life. Like, my whole, like, situation, things, places... And for me, I've had a lot of failure, like especially within business. A lot of things have supposedly supposed to happen and didn't happen. I've come so close and it didn't come to fruition. And just now in my life, years later, things are coming to fruition, like full on. And I and it's happened quickly. And it's so crazy because there have been disappointments since I've been here in Korea. But they didn't knock me down like they would have years ago you know what I mean and I just feel like you know I am eternally in this dentist chair and you know God is just man he's giving me this this smile he's giving it to me like true story like forget the natural dentist and the spiritual dentist of Jesus Christ has really just used all the instruments so that God can bring forth this spiritual smile that I hope it just radiates to the other people around me not naturally but spiritually I gotta keep moving forward like I gotta keep going to the dentist I gotta keep allowing this treatment to work and the treatment would be the word of God the treatment would be prayer the treatment would be fasting in some situations the treatment would be being for real now that's hard that was hard for me to be for real with myself like okay you're whack in this area if you need to get it together like taking that to God and saying God you know what I can't stop this okay maybe it is an addiction and I didn't know it was an addiction but when I tried to stop and I can't and it calls me I know that it's something more than just something I like to do and it's distracting this is keeping me from you this is something that you know the Bible says that light and dark can't dwell in the same place and we take that so deeply but really it's talking about the situations in your life like the light of God can't be in a dark place that you have not taken to him you need to drag those dark places in your heart to god so he can shine the light because light and dark can't be in the same place if you're in a dark room the minute you turn on the light guess what the darkness is gone right and so god just wants you to flip that switch in your life and for me i know that i've struggled with pornography like my whole life i i i since i was six and at one point, I felt so discouraged because I was like, ah, oh, I would never be rid of this. And then I, I had to realize that, you know, something that's been in my life for that long, it's not going to, like, go away overnight. And so as I started to deal with it, as I started to take it to God, it did eventually. I overcame that. And not to say that I don't get tempted. I get tempted all the time. You know, when I'm alone, when it's, um, when it's, uh, when I'm lonely, like I said, when I'm lonely and it's at nighttime, you know, or or it could be a really beautiful woman or a sex scene on a movie. Like, I get tempted all the time because it's in my flesh. But the awesome thing is, because I've been to the dentist, I only need to make that phone call and say, oh, hey, God, hey, now. <laughs> and immediately, the substitution comes. Immediately, that void is filled. And... I don't know, it's just exciting for me to be on this journey and to be free, like, not to be bound to myself and bound to the things in my flesh, you know, that keep me in that cycle, because I was in a, man, I lost so much money, I lost so much time just in that cycle of hours on end watching porn, and then even that coming into my relationships and sexually act all of that I lost so much time but I, I'm so thankful that each trip to the dentist God is a restorer the Bible says he will restore unto you the years that the lotus worm and the canker worm have taken from you and I am so thankful that God has restored those years to me I mean in a matter of three years I have accomplished quite a bit in a matter of three years and I just am like I know this because God had to work on my character like God does not want to take you to a place where your flesh will get you caught up. Like, oh, I made it to the top, and then your character kicks in and you fall all the way down, you know? Like, God would much rather deal with your character 
oh, gradually over time, take you to the top, let you succeed, and let you stay there. And I'm thankful for that. I don't want temporary success. Not spiritually, not naturally, not in my love life, not with my friends, and not with my family. I don't want temporary feel good. I want a constant victory. I want to be a conqueror more than a conqueror. And when we think about that scripture, I'm sorry I'm getting excited. I hope I'm not yelling at you. But when you think about that scripture, um, being more than a conqueror, we always think about it as, you know, the specific situation. But a conqueror is someone who wins one battle. They, they've won the war. You know, you get to say, I won, they conquered. They've overcome. But to be more than a conqueror is someone who is always overcoming. I want to always overcome in every area of my life. I want to be on, I want to stay consistently on top. Like, I don't want to ever have to re-battle it out. Like, I want to fight and have it done and have it be like, I can't mess with her. She gangsta. Spread the word. She gangsta. Don't mess with her. And so that's really and truly what I want to feel like spiritually in every area of my life. I want to be more than a conqueror. I don't want to be a, uh, uh, what is it, a one-hit wonder. I don't want to have to stand on the same testimony years and years and years and years and years. I don't want it to be, whoa, I know there's a God because he did this one thing. No, I want it to be, I am so in love with my God because he's always doing these things through me because I'm always taking myself to him to be worked on. And so the today the dentist said, we'll try out next week to see how this this tap feels right to see if it still hurts or if you're feeling better if you're feeling better then we'll finish your treatment if you're not then we'll keep doing the treatment as long as it needs to because we have to kill all of this because this is all infected and it's inside the tooth and if your inside continues to be infected it will continue to affect the rest of the tooth around it it will continue to cause you pain it'll continue to smell it'll continue to be um, rotten and that's not what you want because when the inside is um, decaying it affects everything around it and I don't want to decay inside spiritually I don't want to ever be in a place where what's going on with me inside starts to stink and affect and spread everything else around me instead I want to be more than a conqueror I want to conquer my flesh constantly and so he was like then we'll cap it off and then you'll have to come back for a checkup and I was like hey do what you do, dude. Like, I, I'm trying to have my tooth be a conqueror. Amen in Jesus' name. So, I just want to share that with you and encourage that with you. Um, man, I mean, it spoke to me. I don't know if it's speaking to you, but it spoke to me that, you know, I have to, it's a process. There's never a place where you've arrived. You know what I mean? Never let anybody tell you that they've arrived. You know, whether it's paying your tithes, understanding why. Because I go through that, I'd be like, Lord, man, for real, do you really need this? <laughs> Do you really need this 10%? Dude, come on. So I go through that. Whether it's paying your tithes, having faith for things that you cannot see, um, having faith for people's souls that they will be saved, because sometimes people totally just like, I, I don't care, I'm, I'm a party in hell, which we all know is not the case. No one's partying in hell, like truly. So I hope that you've been encouraged to be a conqueror. Drag those things to the light. Seek out that constant treatment. Let God... Go ahead and numb your mouth. Go ahead and extract that that's not supposed to be there. Put in the treatment, work on it, and take out what's dead. And I'm so thankful for the process. I am so grateful for the process that is allowing me to enjoy life more and more and more from a different perspective. And I know some of you don't believe that God is real. And I know some of you believe that Jesus Christ is just a myth from a really nice story from a long time ago that people have been added, and t added to and taken from. For, and that's fine. For me, in my life, time and time again, my experience has proved otherwise. It is not just a myth and happenstance and coincidence. It, it is no scientific explanation. And on that note, I just want to say this. I've been talking to a lot of people about God and why I believe in God and etc. For me, I'm an intellectual. I like to read. I like to learn things. I, I like science. I, I love it. But if you could, if you could deduce the authority of my life, the author and the finisher of my faith, if you could deduce him to a mathematical equation, a scientific theory, an afterthought of revelation, I wouldn't serve him. I'm just being honest. I would totally not be a Christian. Because if you can do it, I can do it. I need something greater than me. I need something that is beyond my small frame of thinking my life can be in their hands. Like, if they're beyond me. This was like my husband. I would, I don't foresee myself 
making a wise decision and marrying someone if I'm spiritually further than them. They need to be spiritually further than me if they're going to be head of the household, right? They need to be greater than I am so I can trust them with the decisions and trust them with the wisdom to make smooth transitions through life. Like, it's the same with God. I would not serve a God that was small enough to be deduced to, to, be deduced to a mathematical equation. Like, I would, I would just be like, whatever. That's not, that's not bomb. I need a gangster God. I need, I need a, a champion God who's bigger than math, who's bigger than equations. And so, anyway, I just really hope that God has um, spoken to you. He spoke to me, man, like, I'm all about this dental process. And it's a process that everyone, my whole life, is scary, it's scary. Oh my gosh, that's the one thing you don't, I love this song, <laughs> by the way. I don't know if y'all can hear it. But you don't need... You don't, you don't need to get a, don't let your mouth get that bad to get a root canal. Oh my God. Oh my God. And that's what happens spiritually. People say, don't take that to God. Don't, don't live for God. Don't be bold for God. Like, Ooh, don't, don't pray out loud. Don't let people know you're a Christian. You can be a Christian, but be a quiet Christian, be a closet Christian. You know, like that's what people tell you. Like, don't do it. Don't do it. And then when you get in it, it's like, ah. okay, it was uncomfortable, but it was not that bad. And I could so do this again. And it's worth it in the end. So I am thankful, like I said, for the process. I'm thankful that I didn't listen to people tell me, you know, God isn't real and you don't need all of that. You can do it yourself, do it yourself. Mm, I would not give myself a root canal. Hello, somebody. I just wouldn't. As my friend Toya would say, Anyang, which is hello in Korean. Hello, Anyang. I would not give myself a root canal. Clearly not. So I would let the professional do it. The one who knows what they're doing. The one who, the author and the finisher of my faith who according to Jeremiah 29 11, knew the thoughts and plans that he had for me long before I was even thought about that man, he can give me a root canal any day of the week because he knows what he's doing. He designed me perfectly. He has my destiny in his hands and he literally killed himself to make sure, literally killed himself to make sure that I got to my end. I got to my expected end. That's awesome. No one else can say that. So... I hope you're encouraged. I'm sorry. I can talk about God all day, so I don't want to make this a really long video. But I hope you were encouraged. Hope God blessed you. And glory to the Lamb of God. Molly Music. If you're um, if you're subscribed to me, you can go to my um, my playlist and just click on Molly Music. And you can click on it. And I love his music. So, yeah, man. Glory and hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So, I hope I encourage you guys. I hope you have a blessed and fabulous day. Mwah! Till next time. Bye.